Welcome back to Subbrief's Naval News. Today we're gonna to talk about uh, a report to Congress that summarized testimony from the Missile Defense Agency and leaders from the Pentagon uh, testifying before Congress in May of 2023. This was just a few short weeks ago. And they talked about how the US Navy uh, and its ability to counter the Chinese anti-ship ballistic missiles and their new hypersonic weapons. So how are we gonna evade these things? Well, first let's talk about what they are. Uh, we're talking about the DF-21 and the DF-26. These are Chinese um, transport director launcher ballistic missiles that have very long range and uh, can shoot um, moving targets, ships at sea. They demonstrated this ability all the way back in August of 2020. Both variants of this ballistic missile successfully struck moving targets in the South China Sea, uh, right outside or just north of the Paracel Islands. Now we have two ranges here. We have DF-21 shorter range at 900 or more uh, nautical miles and DF-26 is greater than 2,100 nautical miles. To give you an idea of how far that is, I uh, pulled up this uh, Google Earth example here, and you can see the DF-26 reaches out well past Guam, you know, almost all the way down to Australia, uh, whereas the DF-21 covers most of the South China Sea and well into the Philippine Sea as well. So, and any aircraft carrier or ship that's within these range has the potential of being struck. Something that concerned American leaders was that this range of the DF-26 is well outside the sortie range of the American aircraft carrier sorties. In other words, they could shoot missiles at us before we could launch airstrikes against them. We have to get through this, this bastion, if you will. And there is a new hypersonic missile on the on the chessboard here, this is the YJ-21. Now the United States knew about this and went public with their knowledge back in April of 2022. Uh, China did confirm that this missile does exist this year, February of 2023, and they even did a, a, a short uh, test on April 19th in the uh, South China Sea. So we know this weapon is capable of achieving hypersonic speeds. It has a glide vehicle body, uh, similar to the American hypersonic weapon. All right, so how are we gonna defeat these weapons? What's what's the plan here? Well, according to the Missile Defense Agency and their testimony, uh, that I'm gonna link a, a, in the description, I'll have a link to the document for you so you can read it for yourself. Uh, they said, well, we're gonna disrupt the kill chain. And there's a few other things we're gonna do and talk about today, but the first thing we gotta do is disrupt this very complex kill chain that goes through multiple domains that uh, have to work together to make this anti-ship ballistic missile effective. And if we break this kill chain, any step of this, it will reduce the effectiveness of this weapon. So these are uh, transport erector launcher ballistic missiles, meaning that they're land-based systems, but they have to talk to over the horizon radars and some space-based communication systems to find the target in the first place. So there is a chain of communication from land to air, to space, using cyber, and then finding the target in the maritime domain and back again in order to launch these weapons successfully. And this is what we're gonna disrupt. So this is how we're gonna do it. We broke down the kill chain into six easy steps here called DILDA. The first step is detection. So if they can't see our fleet, they can't shoot it, they don't even know we're there, they don't have a reason to shoot, we have ways to make our fleet less observable from these backscatter over the horizon land-based radars. And that's what the red uh, wedges you see there are. It's just an estimate of how far these land-based radars can see well out into the uh, Philippine Sea and covers the South China Sea as, as well. So once they get a detection, assuming that they do, they also have to filter out all the clutter and identify targets. We have ways of making that difficult as well. And so we're already trying to disrupt the kill chain before we get any further than this. But if they do identify the fleet and they begin identifying targets in the fleet, which if nothing else gets in the way, these land-based radars do have the ability to, to, to do this, they will then begin localizing. So localizing is a very important step where you begin measuring things like speed and distance and direction of motion, and you come up with a solution. A weapons solution comes out of this localization data. So you're learning more and more about the target's behavior as you observe it over time. So we're gonna do things that will make that more difficult if we see them watching us and tracking us, all right? Again, the specifics of what we're doing, we're not gonna go into. Just know that each one of these steps, we have methods that will make that difficult or defeat it entirely. But assuming that uh, the Chinese operators get a, a solution, they then need to push that solution to the weapon, whether it's the DF-21, DF-26, hypersonic you know, YJ-21, 
uh, the, the, the weapon will get the solution. Then the weapon simply needs to be launched. Uh, in the case of the ballistic missiles, it re-enters the, the atmosphere at a very high speed, uh, coming down in the general vicinity of the target. And then it itself needs to find the target, you know, go through these steps again, identify it, localize it, uh, you know, re reaffirm its solution that it was given in the beginning, make corrections, which it will probably need to in order for it to be accurate, and then finally hit the target. So we're going to go and disrupt each one of these steps. And if we disrupt even one of them, the missile, the weapon system will not be effective. All right, so how does this happen? So the, it's called di disrupting the kill chain. Controlling the electromagnetic emissions from the fleet is the first step in this. And there's lots of different tricks that the United States Navy can do to obscure the location of our uh, electromagnetic e e emitters, including deception emitting, which in short, without going into any detail, is putting additional emitters out there that are not with the fleet to just confuse the picture, give them more targets than they, they expect and that are real, right? Another one is we have a very good capability that is uh, very sensitive to disable and jam these long range maritime surveillance radars and their targeting systems. So, uh, you know, if they do get, get an idea of where we are, we're not gonna allow them to localize us using these long range jamming techniques. And this is not just a Navy technology, this is kind of an all domain technology. Air Force will be involved in this. This isn't the Navy by itself trying to jam these radars. We're gonna have a lot of help on this. And then finally, we do have uh, decoys for the anti-ship ballistic missiles. So if they do get launched and they're re-entering the atmosphere, we can do something called generating uh, radar opaque carbon fiber clouds that will, you know, obfuscate the entire fleet. So even if the missile is able to make a, a detection, whether it's visible, you know, or radar or whatever method they're gonna use like infrared, uh, this is going to obscure that picture. So even if it thinks it can see the target, it won't be able to maintain track. It'll just have to do its best, best guess. And these are all soft kill capabilities. So if any one of these does not work, we have what's called hard kill capabilities. China and its weapon systems will have to deal with this. So we have two very good missiles right now. One is the SM3 Block 2 Alpha. And any version of the SM6 is good for uh, taking out ballistic missiles in mid and terminal phases as well. So as they're coming down out of the atmosphere, we can uh, you know, try, try and take them out with these. So between soft kill and hard kill capabilities, it's, it, it's extremely unlikely that these missiles would be effective. Unlike their weapons tests that had ships moving in the water, the ships that they would be shooting from our fleet would be evasive, using these uh, kill chain techniques that we're just broadly talking about. And we have defensive missile fire that can, you know, lessen the number of incoming reentry vehicles. Now, there is one weapon system that we haven't talked about yet. The YJ-21 with its hypersonic weapon that is ship launched from a vertical launcher from the Type 55 destroyer that China has. Uh, we are doing a test this year. FTX-23 is testing a new system that is designed to take that out. Our ballistic missile or FTX 23 test has not happened yet. And it's not, the schedule is not public, but whenever it does happen, whatever results are made public from that test, I'll be happy to bring to you. But just understand this, there is another system that we're not talking about today designed to take out these hypersonic glide vehicles. And we're going to test it this year. And we'll have to see what results are made public from that test. So, so that I can bring it to you. So we have a lot of good uh, equipment that is ready to defend the fleet right now. These, these systems that you're looking at are already in play. So I think we're more than prepared for whatever China may throw at us. Their carrier killing missile uh, is not as effective as they think it is. And if you want to learn more about this, this is just one short appendix of this report uh, called the China's Naval Modernization Implications for U.S. Navy Capabilities. Uh, I will link this PDF in the description. I would encourage everyone to read it. It's very well done because there's even more details than what I talked about here today. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. I, I, I want to say this up front. I'm, I'm a red-blooded American, but you put, uh, you know, a Chinese woman with a rifle and a skirt uh, marching at me, you know, I'm not going to be a sad person. All right. All right this Am I losing my Patriot points for that? <laughs> I mean, look at it. Damn.